Any of you have an opportunity to look your lesson over today? Anybody? The role of the prophet in prophecy. Many of you believe that the Lord, he put people in place. Sister Rich, he uses people. He used them in the Old Testament, and he still uses them today. He used them in the New Testament and the day and time that we live in. I believe there are prophets that the Lord speaks to with a direct word to bring to you and I, to help us to live for him, to help us to serve him, and sometimes just to help us to know kind of what's coming on the world. Some things I don't know if we really want to know, <laughs> but we need to be forewarned. And that's what the role of prophecy and the prophet, is what their roles are. So we'll jump right into our lesson text this morning. With your help and with the Lord's help, we'll not be too long, but we're going to talk about the role of the prophet and of prophecy. The Bible tells us, and we're going to be reading from the book of Numbers, Chapter 12, verses 6 through 8, and then we'll jump down to the 18th chapter of Deuteronomy. The Bible says in Numbers 12 and 6, And he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision, and will speak unto him in a dream. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all of mine house. With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark speeches. And the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Wherefore then were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 15, verses 15 through 22. <clears throat> the Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me, unto him ye shall hearken, according to all that thou desirest of the Lord thy God in Horeb in the day of assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire any more, that I die not. And the Lord said unto me, They have well spoken that which they have spoken. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. But the prophet, which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. And if thou say in thine heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord hath not spoken? When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken, but the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously, thou shalt not be afraid of him. Pastor, would you read our focus verses, Exodus Chapter 7, verses 1 and 2, please. And the Lord said unto Moses, See, I have made thee a God to Pharaoh, and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. Thou shalt speak all that I command thee, and Aaron thy brother shall speak unto Pharaoh, that he said the children of Israel out of his land. Let's ask the Lord to talk to our hearts today. Jesus, we thank you for an opportunity to be in your house today, an opportunity to study your word an opportunity to feel your presence, Lord. We love you and we praise you. We just ask you to speak to our hearts, Lord. Let there be something uh, from this lesson, Lord, that will take up root in our hearts, that will help us to grow stronger in you, Lord, that will help us to draw closer to you. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you. You may be seated. How many of you ladies read the Ladies Home Journal? Or maybe it's, uh, is, it still, is it still around or is that a thing of the past? You can tell I, <laughs> you can tell I don't read it too much. <laughs> but you'd probably worry about me if I did, wouldn't you? <laughs> In December of 1901, now we're going back a long ways, 
The Ladies Home Journal published an article by John Alfred Watkins, Jr. titled, What May Happen in the Next Hundred Years? Watkins did not consult physics, or excuse me, psychics. Instead, he interviewed respected scientists and university professors. Some of their predictions had a measure of accuracy, but others were laughably off base. Nicaragua, Nicaragua and Mexico would join the United States before 2001. Didn't happen, did it? There would be no C, X, or Q in the English alphabet. Last time I checked, Sister Rich, it's still there. <laughs> it's still alive and well. Russian would be the second most spoken language in the world, and it is actually eighth. I don't know, Brother Bauer, where they come up with some of these things, but <clears throat> there would be no animals except in zoos. Rats and mice would be exterminated. Strawberries, raspberries, and blackberries would be as big as apples. You see the resemblance between the news and prophecies back then <laughs> and the news and prophecies of today. If you believe everything you read on this phone, you'd go nuts. It'd run you completely out of your mind. But they gotta have something to talk about. So, I'm certainly not a prophet, but I'm gonna tell you that everything we read coming down the pipes probably not gonna come to pass any more than it did from a hundred years ago. The truth is, God alone knows what tomorrow holds, amen? amen? Only he knows, and he holds tomorrow. Sometimes he tells people what will happen so they can inform others, and we call those people prophets. I think we could honestly say that a true prophet speaks on behalf of God. How many of you believe that? There are also those that the Bible warns us about that are known as false prophets. Any of you ever had heard someone say something and you think, that don't ring true with what this is right here? Bauer, we probably better just maybe not say too much, but just file that away in our mental in the recesses of our mental capacities. If it doesn't correlate with what God's word says, probably not a true prophet. So let's dive just a little deeper into this about true prophets and false prophets. Auntie, the first mention of a prophet in scripture appears in Genesis 20 and 7. And it's kind of interesting when you, when you read about it. You'd all be very familiar with it. Now, therefore, restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet, and he shall pray for thee, and thou shalt live. And if thou restore her not, know thou that thou shalt surely die, thou and all that are thine. Now, what is this scripture referring to? How many of you remember the story of Abraham and of Sarah? Sarah was a very beautiful woman, according to the Bible. That's what, that's what the Bible tells us. <clears throat> and Brother Bauer, back in those days, and even in these days now, there is an attraction between a very beautiful woman and a man. God made us visible, visual creatures, those of us, those of us guys, just the way we're created. Well, it was that way back then, so Abraham feared for his life. How many of you know that basically a king, he could do whatever he wanted to do. If he saw a beautiful woman and he wanted her, but she was married, Brother Bauer, she might not be married very long because next thing you knew, they'd be attending a funeral. He was out of there. So Abraham was concerned about this. So what did he tell him? He said, this is my sister here. <laughs> and, and he wasn't really lying. If you research it, according to the, what I can gather, it, she was a half-sister. Now things operated a little different back in those days than what they, <laughs> what they do now. So 
he, he wasn't really lying. He was fearful for his life. And he said, this is my sister. So Abimelech was a king. And apparently he had a little bit of contact with God because the Lord revealed to him in a dream, said, hey, you better send Sarah back. He had already gathered her up. She was going to be his. And he was happy and he had a dream. And God forewarned him, said, you better send that woman back because she's married. That's a married woman. And if you don't, you're going to suffer the consequences, Brother Bauer. You're going to, not only you, but everything that you have, and I, I take that as his whole family and everything was going to be wiped from the face of the earth. And he, he believed. He, he believed and he trusted that what God said in a dream was actually what was going to happen. And I think I'd do the same thing. I think I'd return her because the consequences aren't worth it. So what do we know about prophets? We know that Number one, the Lord thought very highly of them. Just this little story that we just talked about. God took care of Abraham. He restored his wife back to him. So I believe with all my heart that God has a respect for a prophet. He, he ordained them, he called them, and he utilized them for that purpose. And he, he, he had a love for people that was doing his work. He was certainly taking care of them. And the second thing that we know about a prophet was when he prayed, his prayers were answered. I don't believe God's going to choose someone from off out in left field that doesn't believe in him, that's not a man of God, that's not a man of prayer, to try to utilize them. He's going to choose someone that trusts in him, that believes in him, and has faith that when they pray, Brother Arliss, their prayers are going to be answered. And we know that a prophet is a spokesperson for God. What about the story we read a moment ago about Moses? Now Moses, he probably lacked a little bit of self-confidence when it comes to speaking. The Lord told him, he said, I want you to go tell Pharaoh to let my people go and he said Lord I can't do that I'm, I'm in other words I'm not a, a speaker I'm not a spokesperson I can't do that and he said well your brother Aaron is a good speaker you tell him what I said and Aaron can go tell him so the Lord uses people to tell others and to forewarn those of us that are alive and well in this world now if someone is a prophet, Brother Bauer, and they're a true man of God, and it's coming out of here, and they, they give us a warning that we better do this or we need to do that to make ourselves right with God, then I believe I better heed that. I believe I better listen to that. So a prophet is a spokesperson directly for God. And in most of the time, it's revealed to them through a dream, or a vision, I guess that depends on if you're young or old according to what the Bible says, <laughs> dreams and visions. But in Moses' case, God actually met with him and communicated with him and, and told him, this is what I want you to say. In Ephesians 4 and 12 in the New Testament, it says prophets are among the gifts God gives to the church. How many of you believe that? It goes through a long list of of pastors, prophets, evangelists, teachers, and so on that are a gift that God gives to the church for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, and for the edifying of the body of Christ. It's, you know, sometimes we think, well, if I don't pastor the church, you know, I don't really have a, a job. We all have a job. Each one reach one. Everyone is a minister, Brother Bauer. You're the pastor of the church, but we all have our own little ministry. You know people that I don't know that you can reach out to. Uh, my wife knows people, perhaps, that she rubs shoulders with, that she can make an impact on them that I could never reach them because they don't know me that well and they, 
but they know her and they've watched the life she's tried to live for a number of years. Auntie has people she can reach. And Sister Rich has people and Brother Arliss and Sister Lori and Sister Laverne, everybody has people. Each one reach one. We all have a ministry. That doesn't mean we're all pastors. That doesn't mean we're all involved in pulpit ministry, but we have a ministry to work for the Lord. We know that for every good thing that the Lord has, how many of you believe the devil has a counterfeit? Everything, Brother Bauer, he has a counterfeit for it. It's not the real thing. It's not the real McCoy, as the Lord says. It's, it's something to make you think, well, it's the real thing. Or it's something to make you think, well, this is as good as. But it's an imitation. It's a counterfeit. And those are known as, as we mentioned a few moments ago, false prophets. 1 John 4 1 through 3, the Bible says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. How many of you believe they're, they're rampant today, Brother Bauer? They're, they're running wild. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God, every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God, and every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. We've been hearing about this and reading and studying about this on Wednesday night in Bible study. False prophet. Things going on in the world. Things that are not of God. And I'm getting ready to close in these last days, the Bible tells us that everything that can be shaken will be shaken. Is that discouraging? No. That's just forewarning us. That's telling us of some of the things that's coming upon this world. If it can be shaken, it will be shaken. The Bible says that even unless the days were shortened, even the very elect's sake would be, have trouble being saved. But... For the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. So there's shaking going on right now. How many of you believe that? Amen. Just just as I mentioned a moment ago, moment ago, pick up your phone and read just a little bit in the on the news as to what's going on. And, and I maybe it's bad, but I've about gotten to the point that I just kind of scroll on past it because Sister Rich, I can't change it. I can pray about it, and, but there's nothing else I can do. So I'm telling you, church, it'll bog you down. It will cause you to become, uh, you'll lose track of what you're doing on a daily basis. You'll lose track of your goals that you have set in life. You'll lose track of the things that God wants us to do because we're discouraged. And it's intended to be that way. I really believe that. The news, why can't they report something good? Why is everything that they report, and I'm not getting up on my soapbox, I'm just telling the truth, everything, almost everything is bad news. It's bad today and it'll be worse tomorrow. I don't want my mind contaminated with that because I know something that's good today and he'll be good tomorrow and he'll be good just as long as we live. And he never changes and his name is Jesus Christ. So am I going to fill my mind with all the corruption of bad things? Or am I going to fill my mind and my heart with the blessings of the Lord? That I was able to get up this morning and my wife fix me a good breakfast and, and venture out to work and, and do things that we enjoy and try to make a living for my family and get ready to come to the house of God. We choose. We, we have a choice as to what we think about. We have a choice as to what we put in our minds and what goes in our eyes and in our ears eventually is going to find a lodging place somewhere. And it's in our heart. And what's in our hearts is eventually going to come back out. It's going to come back out. So I'm, classes are coming in. I'm hurrying. How can we distinguish between a true prophet and a false prophet? I don't think we have to look any farther than right here. The Word of God. 
If someone comes in and they tell us something, Pastor, and it aligns with God's word, then I need to listen up. If they're off base and it's nowhere found in the Bible, then maybe I chalk that one up and go on. God's word will distinguish. If, it's his, if it aligns with his word, there's a good possibility that they're telling us something we need to listen to. And I'll leave you with this. The Bible says, try the spirits. See whether they be of God. Try the spirits. And I think the Lord gives us enough wisdom that we can watch someone's life for a while. Are, or is there anyone perfect? No, absolutely not. We're all human. We all come up short. But Brother Bauer, if someone has preached the gospel for 40 or 50 years and you have a hard time putting your finger on their life because of the walk they have with God, I'd probably prefer to listen to that individual. But if it's somebody comes along and, well, today they're in church and they're preaching and they're on fire and the next time you hear about them, well, they're doing something else, then try the spirits. See whether they be of God. And if they're of God, they'll show themselves. They'll come to the forefront. It's kind of like cream. It'll rise to the top every time. Lord bless you. Appreciate you.